Students of the Grenada 7th Day Adventist School took home the trophy for the most outstanding project at the recently concluded National Science Fair 2025. The two day event culminated with an award ceremony on Wednesday at the Grenada Trade Center in Grand Dance. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell attended the fair on Tuesday and pledged the government's support to help develop some of the projects. The fair, valued at $250,000, is sponsored by the government of Grenada through the Ministry of Education in collaboration with the German Development Cooperation, GIZ, and jointly funded by the government of Germany and the Green Climate Fund. The National Science Fair, which resumed in 2018, is held every two years. This year's theme is Resilience in a Challenging World, Adapting STEM Solutions for Climate Change and Disaster Management. Sarana Mitchell has more. All right, so I want to challenge you. Okay. Now the goal should be we will check and see what the equipment is, and then we yes. want to build a model house to scale. Yes, I can have it done. We can have it done as well. Okay. All right, very good. Yes. After viewing several of the projects at the National Science Fair on Tuesday, 11th November, Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell pledged government support to work with the students who undoubtedly sought to provide solutions to issues we face in Grenada. We need to be able to work with the young people to move these from ideas to scalable solutions, particularly because they're focusing on things that matter to, to us in Grenada, from the sargassum to water challenges to uh, energy challenges. Um, to, you know, I met some of the primary school kids who were very articulate and eloquent in terms of addressing beauty products, food, uh, the excess of sugar, and actually showing real examples of the, the quantity of sugar you have in a lollipop versus, say, a popper or carrot or, or so on. So I think it's, it's amazing. So the future is bright. Okay, you said you're going to put your support behind this project. Any other project you think government will be able to put this support behind? What no, no, absolutely. Even some of the projects addressing the water challenges. Um, I think on the filtration process, we just came from the young ladies who ex uh, explained them. There were two sets I saw in terms of water filtration. The Presentation Brothers uh, College uh, boys are talking about the Annadale uh, water treatment plant. And in fact, coincidentally today, I got a brief uh, as it relates to that project as well. And one of the main challenges we have is always the question of when the water is very turbid and it gets very dirty, the fact that you have to lock off the treatment plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore you end up with the irony of a lot of rainfall with no water or poor quality water. So how do we address those things? Um, so I actually think, to be honest, that a lot of, not just central government, but a lot of the other government agencies uh, should, should attend the fair so that they get to see uh, the ideas uh, and the research and the science that's involved so that we can see how we can work with some of them to bring some of this to fruition. During the closing ceremony on Wednesday, featured Speaker Honorable Kareen James, Minister for Climate Resilience, the Environment and Renewable Energy, made mention of the project by students of the T.A. Marshall Community College, which focused on addressing the sargassum seaweed problem. In viewing very briefly some of the displays, one project caught my attention. I think it was a group of students from the T.A. Marshall Community College transforming sargassum into sustainable building material. In that simple act of ingenuity, ingenuity lies a profound lesson that the very challenges which threatens us can also empower us. I saw a similar initiative a few months ago in Mexico where we, we went to a conference for Latin America and the Caribbean. And it was a great example there to see how government created that enabling environment and how they joined hands with the private sector to convert that same invasive seaweed into products of construction and export. They understood that resilience is not only about surviving shocks, it is about converting crises into engines of opportunity. That is the kind of thinking we must nurture across our education system. Our schools, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, must evolve from spaces of instructions into ecosystems of innovation. The role of our educators, and for those of you who are in this room, your role is to ensure, and your role is also no longer to prepare students for the jobs that exist only for today. But you have a fundamental responsibility to equip 
them for the industries that do not yet exist. This is the weight of your responsibility, a very big one, to teach our children how to think, not merely what to think, to guide them in mastering the technologies that will shape Grenada's competitiveness in an increasingly complex world. And to our students, those that are young, God bless their youthfulness, I want to recognize you that, and to recognize, I want you to recognize, sorry, that science fairs like these are not the end of an academic exercise, but the beginning of a national mission. The brilliance you have displayed here must now find direction. You must allow curiosity to mature into vocation. You must turn your ideas into industries and prototypes into purpose. The world you are inheriting will be defined by the power of knowledge and every field from energy to agriculture, from health to tourism will depend on people like you who can merge scientific insight with social conscience. As major sponsors of the Science Fair, the German Development Corporation, GIZ, with funding from the Government of Germany and the Green Climate Fund, were impressed with the projects presented by the students. Head of projects for G Cruise GIZ is Marian Geis. I think from the last few years, and so I see really an uptake on the sargasm. So sargasm used not just for biogas, but for paper, for concrete. Um, sustainable use. It's really something that is very trendy at the moment. <laughs> very, very and much smelly. And, and smelly, yes. <laughs> so I think it's very close to home for a lot of people and I can see the creativity and also that it's, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of thought and research went to it because it's a new topic as well. I also like this, again, renewable energy, we see that every year, um, but new sites to it, very well-fledged new ways of presenting it. Less water, that was interesting. Last year we saw a lot of rainwater harvesting. We have some water treatment here. Um, um, and then uh, sustainable recycling use, waste use. Um, again, some beauty products. What I also personally like is the cocoa fertilizer project. That's also something that stands out as a unique project. Um, and then also like whole infrastructure project that look at like communities or whole solutions, adaptation villages or like hurricane proof buildings, infrastructure, flood resistant uh, Grenville and so on. So yeah. In one word. In one word, it's amazing. The theme of Science Fair 2025 was resilience in a challenging world, adapting STEM solutions for climate change and disaster management. Over 60 projects from 44 schools were presented over the two days at the National Science Fair, which was held at the Grenada Trade Center in Grand Dance. Schools began preparing for the National Science Fair in 2024 and were judged during the district science fairs held in May of 2025. Sorana Mitchell reporting.